What's going on guys, my name is Elden Hero and welcome to episode 94 of my Leicester City career mode. We're starting this episode off with some bad news regarding Divock Origi as we find that he is going to be out for about 3 weeks having picked up an injury in the game against Bayern Munich where he had to be substituted. But we go into our first game of the episode regardless and that is against Arsenal. We're playing away from home at the Emirates against a lowly positioned Arsenal who are down to about 7th or 8th in the league at the moment and just not doing very well. Uh, obviously Obviously their team hasn't changed that much because it's FIFA 15 and it's a relatively good team like you look at that lineup and you're like yeah it's decent but um then you take into account that a lot of their key players are roughly about 70 years old at this stage like five years into the future what age is Cazorla now I'm pretty sure that he's in his late 20s or early 30s uh, which puts him in just quite an, an aging position at this point but uh, in the 18th minute of this game Jonathan Williams volley goes just wide of the post as we look to take the lead against Arsenal and capitalize on their poor form although it, it's very strange in FIFA like uh, as you see Danny Ings's chance going very close there in FIFA when a team is doing badly like let's say you're coming up against Man City and they're like 15 in the league and you know that going into it that won't be reflected in the way that they play they'll still play like a team who are first in the league so um, I knew it would still be a difficult game and Danny Ings in the 39th minute did manage to come in on goal and give us the lead uh, which is pretty good like before half time obviously uh, an important thing to note about this game is that uh, Vialba didn't start and Zivkovic didn't start the reason for that being uh, that we have a game against Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League just three days after this fixture this fixture is on a Sunday afternoon and we're playing Dortmund on a Wednesday night so um I just couldn't afford to play all of my key players but Jack Butland making a fantastic save in the 52nd minute from I believe it was uh, Ed and Dzeko's chance and then in the 56th minute another save from Butland as he tips Dzeko's header just over the crossbar then in the 71st minute Santi Cazorla on the edge of the area making some good headway he passes it to Ramsey whose shot is saved and uh, Alexis Sanchez missing an unbelievable guilt edge chance uh, from like I don't know what was that like four yards away but in the 86th minute Arsenal coming bombing forward and I thought that they were going to get a penalty at that chance but we did survive we did manage to launch into a counter attack which saw Danny Ings taking the ball around Meza Ozil and playing it into the open space for Yassine Benzia to run into before you Ronaldo chops around Koscielny and sees his shot deflected off Meza Ozil's arm and goes straight into the back of the net to wrap the game up for us and give us a 2-0 victory with a weakened team away from home at the Emirates Stadium against Arsenal so a really really good performance from us there and um, a really good match match overall and just a, I don't know a great way to uh, to celebrate a victory uh, I'll show you the squad report on the screen right now it might be a little bit fast so you might need to pause if there are any players in particular that you want to watch out for but um I don't know I'll say the things that I always say uh, with the squad report you know if I actually talk about the squad report so um, a lot of players just are not progressing at all for whatever reason um, but we are looking at going to another club as soon as this season is over and still the main one on my mind is Manchester United I did have a look at the browse jobs section to make sure that it was still there um, and it is Liverpool is also still there Arsenal is also still there but here's the, here's the reason why I want to go to Man United um, on top of everything that I've already said about Man United I just think that would be the, the best uh, sort of logical progression from here but uh, as far as I'm aware Chesnoid Gaming has just started a Liverpool career MGH is doing an Arsenal career Chani Sports did a Liverpool career at the start of the year and I just don't want to do a Liverpool career for that reason but what I might do is in this career mode I'll go to Man United and then I might start a Liverpool one in February um, of 2015 just because they'll have made the, the transfers and they'll be updated you know you know, January transfer window because I want to start a new career mode around that time um, I've also been considering putting Celtic into the championship or whatever but I'm not sure if I'm going to go through with that or not but uh, here's a look at the league table as you can see we're in third position uh, level on points with Manchester City but we need to catch up with Chelsea although if we win our game in hand we will be just one point behind them but I think what I'm gonna do is try and get first in the league um, and once I'm in first place apply for the United job um, uh, on a different save file of the same one if you know what I mean like uh, you know Leicester 1 is this one Leicester 2 will be the one where I go to Manchester United and I'll finish the season with Leicester then I'll reload the other save get to Man United holiday all the way up to where we are and uh, and that will be that but our next game is against Borussia Dortmund this is at the King Power Stadium and this is in the quarter final no it's in the last eight which is the quarter final so it is the quarter final of the Champions League I'm so bad at things that involve numbers but uh, the first chance of the game came in the fourth 
44th minute, a very cagey affair against the side who were drawn in our group stage in the uh, in the initial stages of the tournament. But uh, Mike Anlete picks the ball up in the 45th minute inside stoppage time. He dribbles it around Socrates and gets into a great position inside the box and manages to unleash a shot with his left foot that curls into the far corner of the net and gives us an unlikely lead against Borussia Dortmund. I say unlikely just because of the nature of the match up to this point. It was a very, very slow one, a very cagey one, a very dull affair. But in the 55th minute, Mkhitaryan comes forward. He plays a nice ball into Marco Royce, who plays it back to Mkhitaryan, who sees his shot smash off the underside of the post and go out of play for a goal kick. Then we come up to the 73rd minute of the game with Andrew Robertson on the left-hand side of the pitch as he is looking for any kind of an avenue uh, to play the ball into. He does find Ricardo Zivkovic in a great position, who gets round Nevan Subotic and sees his shot saved by the keeper. And Mike Analete was sadly unable to bundle that rebound into the back of the net. So uh, the game continues up to the 82nd minute when Mike Analete comes true on goal. And I could not believe that he missed that chance. An unbelievable miss from Mike Analete. He was usually so good in those positions. Then we come into the final five minutes of the game with Valer Brasson playing pretty well down this left-hand side of the pitch. He plays it into Jeffrey Schlupp, who gets into a great position and manages to find the back of the net. And I was delighted up to this point. And then the linesman put his flag up and I thought, well... That's a bit of a ball ache, isn't it? Because I was so sure that he was onside. And to be honest, I'm still not convinced. Um, they say that offside is an area of your body that you can score on. You can score with your back. And it looks to me as though that defender's back is level with Jeffrey Schlupp's feet. I would love to know what you guys in the comments section think because I'm not really too good with depth perception and uh, angles and things like that. Like, I'm pretty bad. Um, obviously, that all comes with the math side of the brain and I'm really bad at counting. So, it's, you know, I I'm, in a, I'm in a pretty bad way mentally. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, I would like to know what you guys thought of that situation. Then we come to the very, very last minute of the game. Marco Royce taking this free kick. He swings it in towards Thomas Puszczek, who wins the header and sees the ball bounce along both of the posts and then over the line, uh, to which Jack Butland went in and actually punched it into the goal and basically conceded the away goal for us in the last minute. Like, that wasn't the goal up until Jack Butland led with his knees. And here is some amazing camera work from me. Um... You know, very fluid camera work that isn't at all tedious. And look at this. You can see the ball is over the line. Uh, I was just... Uh, there's no word. Inconsolable is the word. There is a word, and it's inconsolable after that. Like a very, very late away goal, which means that if we go to the Signal Iduna Park now and get a nil-nil draw, that's us out of Europe. So we're going to have to go there and score, which does change things a little bit. However... Uh, we're playing against Swansea City uh, in between our games with Dortmund and Hector Vialba returns to the lineup, which is a huge boost for us naturally as he is a fantastic player. Swansea City's team is very good and our games against Swansea have become a little bit formulaic, I think, over the last while. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that actually as the game goes on, but in the seventh minute we got a shot through Baraki, and then Brandt would have a shot in the eighth minute as his shot gets saved at the near post by the goalkeeper and put out for a corner kick. Then we come up to the 20th minute of the game with uh, Mohamed Kamara on the ball, who actually used to play for us uh, in the swap deal involving Ki Sung Young. That was what brought him to their club. Uh, but in the 25th minute, Jonathan Williams gets brought down and indeed injured by powerhouse John Joe Shelby, who plays the ball into Levaya and then plays a lovely 1 2 with the Croatian striker. Uh, and then he sees his shot go just wide of the post. Then we come up to just beyond the half hour mark with Hector Vialba bombing forward, uh, trying to uh, get a goal um, to add to his tally. But he passes it into Danny Ings at the far post, who easily side foots the ball into the back of the net to put us into the lead against Swansea City. Then we come up to just before half time with uh, Obang on the right hand side of the pitch, looking for an opportunity to cross. He finds Jefferson Montero at the far post, who actually does incredibly well to find the back of the net there. The control was perfect, the volley was very, very good. And and uh, the touch allowed him to bring the ball into an area of the box where he wouldn't be challenged. But uh, he unleashed that volley with real venom into the far or into the near post, and it was just a really nice goal. Like when it went in, I wasn't even mad. I was like, "Yeah, that's actually decent." But uh, we come up to the hour mark of the game with Jandro Shelby on the ball, and he sees his shot towards the near post, hit off the post, and then. Um, for some reason, John Stones felt the need to do a dummy. But uh, in the 67th minute, the ball comes to Jefferson Montero, who plays it wide into Curtis Obang, who is in a great... Is that even his name? Obang's shot gets saved by Jack Butland and put wide. 
But uh, this game needed a late goal, and I thought that it would get one. Uh, which team it went for, however, was still up in the air. But Divock Origi coming back and doing some really good defending before playing the ball uh, up towards Baragi eventually, anyway, through Jonathan Gomez. Then Baragi has a look over, plays it into Bertrand Traore due to Jeffrey Schlutt being in an offside position. Traore does a step over around Tiendeli and plays the ball into Jeffrey Schlupp, who dispatches a volley worthy of winning absolutely any game in the history of football. An incredible volley from the Ghanaian striker, who is a striker. Fuck off and stop asking me why I play him as a striker. <laughs> this is why. This amazing ball in and just that first time volley. Um, I mean, the ball did bounce and all of that, but uh, an incredible volley. I had to actually look at the replay and make sure it wasn't a half volley, but just a really, really nice goal. Worthy of winning any game, as I said, and that is what gave us the winner against Swansea City. That's the end of this episode. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do leave a like. That would be much appreciated. Hopefully, you guys are as excited for 100 episodes as I am, which is coming up. You're just six episodes away now. Amazing. But, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.